Right guys, so today's video is going to be about intermittent fasting, okay? I've had a few messages on Instagram recently just asking why I delay, why I eat so late at the start of the day, okay? Why is breakfast not the most important meal of the day? The first thing to note is the first thing I want to cut out. Breakfast is not the most important meal of the day. Cereal companies like Kellogg's and all the Frosties and Lucky Charms and all that, they create breakfast as the meal of the day because they want to sell products, okay? It's absolute bollocks, okay? So that's the first thing to note. Now, what is intermittent fasting? Intermittent fasting is basically delaying your first meal to a certain point. So this could be anywhere from 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock, whatever you normally eat your first meal of the day, whatever time that is, you are just basically delaying that until later on, okay? Quite often, this is also called the 16-8 diet or the 14-10 diet. Basically, having a 14-hour, a 16-hour fasting period, which includes your sleep and then however long you delay your first meal for, and then a 10-hour eating window or an 8-hour eating window. If you ever see 16-8 or 14-10, this just means intermittent fasting, okay? So on the board, I've put a time scale of when people would normally wake up, from seven o'clock in the morning until when they go to bed at 10 o'clock at night. So you can eat within any time period, okay? So a regular day, you might split your meals up throughout this time period, okay? So that's about 15 hours. That 15 hour window is what you're gonna sp spread your daily caloric allowance into that day. So I'm gonna work it off, keep it dead simple, and use an example of a male who is on 2,000, 2,300 calories, okay? So, if you've got 2,300 calories to play with and this male wants to lose body fat, okay, you're gonna spread that throughout the day. So, those 2,300 calories has to be spread out all the way from a 15 hour window, okay? So, because that's quite low for most males when they're dieting, they're probably gonna find that hard and they're probably gonna have to eat smaller smaller meals and 2300 calories doesn't go quite far on a 15 hour window however if you use intermittent fasting delaying that first meal your eating window is going to be reduced down to 10 hours so from say 12 p.m here you can eat you could be eating 2300 calories in this 10 hour window or 2300 calories in this 15 hour window here so if you can manage and you can cope to delay your first meal and you don't mind like if you're not a big eater in the morning this could be very beneficial for fat loss because if you think about it all i'm asking you to do is instead of eating at seven or eight o'clock in the morning like you normally would i'm just asking you to delay it a little bit further to maybe 11 12 o'clock so that window of eating period between 12 and 10 o'clock is a lot smaller it reduces the time by five hours and what you can do with this is because you reduce that window you're probably going to feel like you're not dieting or in a calorie deficit because you're going to eat a lot of food within that 10 hour window and psychologically you can have bigger, denser meals, which will be more calorie dense because you've got a smaller time period to fit it in by. So you're probably gonna feel a lot better about that. So that is pretty much the basics of intermittent fasting. You just delay your first meal here, knocking off this five hour period and bringing it from a 10 hour window instead of a 15, 16 hour window, okay? As who is intermittent fasting for? It is for, if you can, do this fast period until 12 o'clock and you don't mind it and you don't mind waiting until then then it is for you because it's going to benefit you for fat loss because you've just got a smaller window delaying meals is good for fat loss it's as simple as that you've got low, lower calories than your body requires at that set time so if you're in a calorie deficit you are literally eating under the normal levels what your body's used to to drop body fat so if you're gonna delay that, it is gonna be for you. So if you are happy to do that, then do it. It's only gonna help your diet. Saying that, if you train in the morning and you feel like your sessions are very poor because of that, and you're feeling very lethargic and you need more fuel, then it's probably not best that you're gonna do that. 
if you're going to do the fast and try and train fasted, try it out and see how you feel. But if if it starts really, if it starts to really neglect your performance, it's probably not going to be the wisest decision. But if someone's training at five o'clock at night here, they're still going to be within their eating window when they're training. So if people are training, like my most of my clients will train four, five, six, seven, eight o'clock at night. So that's still fine. What's the point in them? What, what's the need? For them to eat so early they could use intermittent fasting to help basically help this help structure their day for fat loss and benefit them and um, a couple of tips that I would give for intermittent fasting because I have used this before nowadays I train up quite early in the morning so I don't really tend to use it as much but on certain days when I can use it I will just do the odd day of intermittent fasting but um, in times before like last year I was training like four or five o'clock at night so i would use it and fast until 12 one o'clock every single day because it just helped me psychologically because i'm a nighttime eater it just helped me adhere to my diet better it kept me satisfied eating more food later at night rather than having those meals when i'm not even that hungry in the morning okay tips for intermittent fasting would be that drink drink a lot of water you want to fill up on water especially during that delay in that first meal and when you're still in that fasted state <coughs> um, black coffee helps in the fasted state it keeps you a little bit satisfied um, and sparkling water is also a good one if you think about it all I'm asking you to do you're in a fasted state from 10 o'clock at night uh, half 10 whenever you go to bed until you wake up you're in a fasted state anyway there is no problem with making that fasted state when you're sleeping a little bit longer to help your fat loss and aid your fat loss. None whatsoever. There's no metabolic furnace or fire or all this shit that you see on Instagram saying like you need to start your metabolism and breakfast the most, important, the most important meal of the day because it spikes your metabolism. Your body doesn't adapt that quickly and it, there's no metabolic furnace, okay? There is none of that sort of metabolic fire and all of that crap that old, the old mentality that people used to tell you. Okay, there's no issue with doing this. And your metabolism's not gonna stop. Your metabolism's always going to work continuously, okay? Especially if you're resistance training. Your body's always in an anabolic state anyway, okay? It's the same thing as having eaten every three hours. There's no reason to eat every three hours, like, unless you want to. That, that's it, There's, your body's not gonna self-destruct if you don't eat within three hours and you delay it until five, six, seven hours, as long as you're eating your daily macronutrients and your protein requirements, your fiber requirements and your nutrient re micronutrient requirements. Like your body's not gonna self-destruct. Nutrient timing and things like that are the very, very last minuscule one, 0.5% once you've got everything else right. Intermittent fasting is an option and it will benefit you if you're on a fat loss diet if you feel like it helps you stick to your diet for longer. I think that's all for the video and I think I've pretty much covered intermittent fasting. If there's any other questions about it or anything you can email me or drop a comment in the section below but that's just the very basics of intermittent fasting. Okay. At the end of the day, like I've said time and time again, calories in versus calories out. Okay. How you distribute it and how you play about with it as long as you're hitting your macros it doesn't really matter